So after booting up Cinema 4D R20 a thousand times, I always got really, really fascinated by that loading screen render. I always wanted to try and recreate it because when I first started in Cinema 4D, it was renders very similar to that. Taking one look at it, I knew the method of how it was done, or at least I think I do. Either way, I got a pretty close result. After recreating the renders and posting them in a Facebook group, I found out it was Ron Render that done it. He'd done it a while ago, which was why I wasn't really aware that he'd done it. I'm sure if you're into Cinema 4D, you know who he is. His stuff is awesome. Um, and today, I kind of want to go through how I made it. But the thing is, is I've always thought this render, it kind of has an effect on you. and It, it kind of gets you ready to create your own stuff. It's this render where it, it gets you excited because it's just, it's so clean and so crisp. And it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's, it's kind of soothing in, in a strange way. Um, and, and this sent me on a massive throwback because when I, I first got Cinema 4D a long time ago, and I was browsing through YouTube tutorials, um, just eager to create something, um, I found this tutorial on these glowing spheres, and I must have followed this tutorial about 10 to 15 times, and I remember being so proud of the render I created, if I was on my old PC I would be able to pull it up, but I'm not, um, I, and I remember setting it as my wallpaper, and I was so so proud of it, and I went and I revisited that tutorial um, after deciding to take on this little project of recreating these sphere renders, and uh, took a little stab at it uh, again so many years later and came out with some cool results. It, it wasn't very different. I don't think there's um, much you can do with it. But um, if, you, if you've if you never followed that tutorial, I'm sure there's a lot of you that would have. If you haven't, um, please do. Or I guess I'm doing a more updated version of it. Um, but I did, I, I after creating this, uh, the orange spheres, I, I went on a bit of a spiral and I just kept making them and I just kept spitting out all these different renders and I'm going to go through a couple different of the scene files today and as usual all the project files will be down down below there'll be a lot more project files than what was in last week's tutorial um there's just all, all of them are going to be there maybe, hopefully maybe five or six um and I did want to kind of do a simulation with some soft body stuff but um it was aggravating me so I didn't do it but uh if we go into the scene here and we take a look, this is the main sphere of the render, uh, of the sphere scattered. Now, I did do one with kind of like spheres falling through the sky as well, just, um, well, floating, I guess, just to vary it up a bit. But if you don't know how it's done, um, and I only remember this from the tutorial so long ago, is you just put them in a cloner, and you put a rigid body tag on it, and you just, you let them drop. You let, you let them come down, you, you wait for them to go somewhere you want, hit pause, and you're good to go um and when it came to the actual the hard part of this was recreating and texturing it um the first thing i spotted was he had this kind of anisotropy uh texture uh around the metal which is pretty easy uh to create in in the nodes um but he also had it varied between that and the glass spheres now inside his spheres he kind of modeled through it and you, you can see that i I kind of just couldn't be bothered to do that, <laughs> but um, I, I got so far doing it, and one thing I did notice um, as I got further and further into it, it was that there was something that was missing, and that was that he had a something glowing inside of them. As soon as I added that, it looked just like it, and I was like, wow. Um, so that was kind of the, the hidden button in all of this. I don't know if I want to go over this one or start a new one. I'm pretty sure a lot of you will want to see this one. I will put this project file below. Um, but what I also did for the floor texture was uh, I just used a noise. Um, I was going to use a surface imperfection, but it didn't. Um, so I just used a noise, um, leveled it out. I inverted it so it was bumping up and uh, brought it down a bit. And I think I added quite a lot of contrast. You get these bumps. Um, as that was the thing I noticed. Um, the lighting was nothing too special. For that anisotropy on the metal, if you don't know how to do this, um, you and Axis Davidson showed me this. Uh, you just put a transform into a, a, a noise and all the way down, put the, the X all the way up, and you end up with something a little bit like that. Uh, so it's a little easy hack. Uh, Modeling the ball, um, I'm pretty sure you can suss that out. Um, I, I just used hemispheres, done one side. Uh, beveled it, flipped it, done the other thing, and then 
shrunk a sphere inside of it and um, made it glow. Um, so what I'll do is I will start another scene. I'm going to do it a bit. I'm not going to recreate this exactly. Uh, I might recreate this, then recreate another one, do a couple different ones. Um, so I'll run over this one first. We'll try and do this one again. And then um, the the one I've been doing with the gold balls, I really want to take a stab at that and show you how I've done that because that was a lot of fun and that, that was really satisfying. Um, so we'll run through that one as well um, and I'll show you how I've done them. Because uh, there's something really nice about having this detail of a sphere with kind of like a line through it. I kind of want to try that. Um, but if I take a hemisphere, cut it in half again, and then we've got quadrants, and then that look, that look like a really cool sphere. Um, so uh, to me, it always looks like something people are chasing in a movie. It reminds me of the egg from the fourth Harry Potter movie. Anyway, I'm rambling. Right, let's start. Okay, so fresh in the scene here. Um, we'll drop a plane. Um, now, just to show you what to actually um, see, you grab your sphere. Right, we don't need to open, open right now. Grab your sphere. Um, if you control, well, sorry, alt click on the clone and drop it in there. Hit grid array, bring it up. And you can maybe do five plus five, and then just move them apart. Four. Um, on the sphere, not on the clone. Simulation texture just body on the plane. Simulation texture body, collider body. Uh, and just go up, or the spheres need to come down. I think. And down, hit play. It's that simple. So if you didn't know how to do that, um, there you go. You can leave now. <laughs> but it's 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 gen generally that simple. Now, if you're not getting the result you want, um, you can always do something. Now this is quite fun. Put like a a, <laughs> a cone in the middle. Um, maybe if you grab, I don't know if you can do this as well. You can kind of do some funny things. Uh, if you put a null there, you can make the clone kind of spread out in a in a nice way. So if you do that, and then uh, the cone, put a collider body on it. And I want to slum out that a bit. Make it invisible. It's still going to get reacted to. So if you do that, maybe do that without the, uh, the null. It's just a way to kind of get a different reaction. And a, a cone's maybe not... I would have thought a cone would have worked, um, but a cone just kind of yeah. Maybe if if you're not happy with um, the way your spheres are falling, you can just add like an invisible object under there. Um, I don't know if you can actually random them from the start. You should be able to and then drop them. So yeah, that's that's a much easier way of doing it. Never mind. Um, if you just maybe offset them, um, and then they're gonna fall uh, in a little bit. Because, you know, usually when they're in this grid array, they, they they fall on top of each other and it's a bit static. Um, but yeah, if you maybe drop them like that. Uh, but what we'll do is we will delete that and start modeling the sphere. Um, so I know what I did. It's I just made a hemisphere. Um, I didn't use this up surface because I thought it would bring me problems. So I just put that to like, yeah, like 48. Because uh, I knew it would be a little bit of distance between as in the sphere, um, and then just make it editable. Um, I brought, was it the third one in? I'll say the third one. Uh, delete it. Uh, oh no, I didn't bring it down maybe. Yep, just bring it down. Um, and UL, I didn't go too thorough with it. Um, bell it there because I know that this this side that was on the inside here um, that wasn't actually the sphere on the inside but I'm going to do that this time uh, so ul delete um, and then ul right control a Thought of that. Quick caps. Is that going to cause us problems with you? No. Yeah, okay. Um, UL, bevel, help, bevel, and 
and you put a nice bevel on that and you get like a really really nice uh, shine um, and then what did I do from there well I did this really really fascinating trick I don't know if you know this but I duplicated it I spun it around uh, <laughs> and then you know we'll call one bottom and we'll call one top group one sphere duplicate it don't want to work destructively uh, leave that just like that for now um, let's get it corner shouldn't have delete that other corner now should I whoa whoa Ah. Is that going to break them? Yeah, it's going to break them. Now, put material on the top, put material on the bottom. Before we merge them, let's grab that other sphere. I pop it in the middle. I just want it kind of below. This is going to be the glowing sphere. Yeah, maybe about there. Should be okay. Don't need to worry about the segments. Bang them all together like that. Stick that in the corner. Out in there. Don't want them to break apart. Uh, that should work nice now. Hey, where are you going, mate? Awesome. Uh, we're getting there. So we've got our nice, fascinating sphere doing that now. Uh, you know, Rod and Render put a lot more effort into modeling these. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll go on to uh, styling these a little bit. Uh, I know that my plane is a bit big. Fears are maybe a bit smaller. Uh, so we'll drop our octane window in here. Now again, because I want to do a couple different uh, because I want to do a couple different uh, renders uh, in this tutorial. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to show you kind of what I did. I'm going to get a simulation here before I start um, texturing them. Cool. Uh, we'll grab a HDRI and we'll start off with actually the glowing texture. Um, so, because that really was a big thing. Uh, just kind of made it something like that. Yeah. Um, now, of course, we do want two spheres in here. I'll just make the metal ones right now. Um, we'll call this metal. Um, and make that metallic, just like that. Uh, so now we have the metal side. And then we'll call this the sphere. Sphere. And we'll make it orange. Is the fruit named after the color? Or the color named after the fruit. I think the color is named after the fruit. Something like that. Nope. That's way off. I think it was maybe about 28%. Nope. Too dark. 5 Closer. It's weird how, like, getting accurate colors um, can actually be a really... Uh, tricky thing sometimes uh, and then roughness I put up I brought the specular down that kind of gives it a, a plasticky look um, now the color should be slightly easier to get yeah. um, and then we want the material for the floor uh, now what we actually want to do is duplicate that call it floor it there and then make it 
a slightly bit more glossy. Um, noise. Put that in the bump. Yep, you can see that's doing its thing now, so that's that sorted. Um, push that a camera in, because of the glow. I don't want to do that. So, the glow actually looks like it's glowing. Uh, and under the metal material, um, if you don't know this trick, um, in the other render I had the balls uh, kind of a iron material, but I want to do aluminium, so set this to 1.3, 6, 7, point four, seven four, six, and then 0 point nine, six, five, two, one. Zero point six, one, five, two, five, point. Right, there we go. Now our metal once we do our thing image to it, it's gonna look a bit more like aluminium. So we'll grab our noise, we'll put it in the roughness. This could be a little fiddly. To get how you want. Now, I'll start bopping the camera around a bit. I'm gonna bring the power and the HDRI down a bit. I'm gonna drop in a light. You see my last tutorial, I'm kinda of gonna do a similar thing. Add it there, bring up a light like that. And then I'm gonna bring another one here. Just gonna cover it. Two points like that. One down in the power. I'll just bring that back up a bit. It did take me uh, quite a bit of trial and error to get this right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a glass material, duplicate the sphere, replace the metal one with the glass, drop them in, and then you get that variation. Uh, unfortunately, I think I made the sphere inside too small, but that doesn't matter. We're okay. Uh, so we'll just put five to fake shadows, uh, and then I added because on some of his he had like a kind of translucent uh, effect, and a bit of roughness. Uh, and then the size of the spheres doesn't really matter. And so then much. we're kind of getting to the point now where it just takes that classic fiddling about till you get it where you want it. I also think if you're watching this tutorial and you're not following along but you're gonna, um, maybe try and get more of a bevel uh, here, um, which I remember doing last time. Um, it was just because when I extruded the sphere out I didn't uh, add enough uh, thickness uh, to it, um, which then limited my bevel. I think that's about as far as I'm going to take this because I think to get it to look good uh, is probably in your hands now. Just trial and error, that was uh, kind of the basis of it. I wanted to run through that relatively quick. Now I'm going to spend a bit more time going over the scenes I created. So for the, the scene I did with the metal balls, that was, um, that was, uh, yeah, that was a fun scene. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, so we'll set that up there. Um, we'll drop in our sphere again. Um, this time we're not really going to do much modeling to it. So you could probably set this to, I don't know, maybe 96. Um, wrong one, 96. Uh, and then hemisphere. And then just hit C, control A, uh, create caps, extrude this out, pretty decent amount. As well. And then, like I just mentioned, um, a much bigger bevel. Something like that. Because uh, then if you do stick uh, a metal material on it. Um, you 
it's the same HDRI. Um, well, not right now, but in a few seconds, we will see the effects. That wonderful magic trick of just doing that. Uh, you can kind of see the effects of the bevel here. I actually made it too big, don't like that. If it goes too big, it looks obvious. Um, if it's just the right size, uh, maybe about that, yeah, it, it just looks much better. There we go, that's nicer. Um, so straight away, we'll just, uh, unless you do wanna, in fact, yeah, uh, just add the material on both of them individually. And merge them. Um, in fact, add a second material. Merge them, and then delete it, and replace the material with that one. And then you've got the selection tags. Uh, and if you want to like mix and match later on, uh, you can do. So we'll call this ball. Scale it down, uh, and we'll. Get set up a bit here. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a gold. Uh, so for this on the RGB IOR, I'll just I'll, I'll skip so all the parameters there. You can pause it. You can pick them up. Uh, okay, so that's the parameters uh, to get gold. Uh, I will set it to GGX. Uh, I just prefer the way GGX looks. I feel like it's a bit more realistic. Now, um, the assets I actually use is Rich Nosworthy's, uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name, his uh, Redshift Shader Ball. He has a few cool assets in there. Um, he has, um, I think, a, a nice smudges texture. I have plenty of them kicking about, but he has this floor texture. That was my little secret ingredient here, but I will just load the smudge texture in. So if you want these for free, um, I'll, I'll link it below uh, as well. Um, so we just bump that in there. And then maybe put that to about five. Uh, and that was kind of all I did for the gold material. Now the floor, um, mixed material. Then here, put mix on the floor. Uh, get uh, one material and make it. In fact, that doesn't matter right now. Image texture. Bring in the floor and pop it on the diffuse. You should see that. Pop it in the opacity and in the amount. Drag the gold texture in. Sorry if I'm going too quick, I just don't want to waste time. The gold is now going to fill in those bits there. Um, I believe if we slap an invert now on that and then get glossy. Just to make sure, sometimes it's a bit hard to tell. Um, that was kind of all I did for the floor. Um, yeah, there we go, you can see that now. Uh, so it looks like this really nice kind of matte. Um, and then we'll just do our usual clone. Grittery. Now, I want them much smaller.
and <laughs> it's it's kind of weird you spend so much time making a scene look good and then once you've created it once you can kind of just do it again uh, I use one of grayscale gorillas free LUTs uh, and then to finish it off um, What we can do is add in a small sphere of five, four. Bring in a cloner, do the same thing. Make sure they're not touching because if they are, um, they will just kind of explode and nobody wants that. And that was how I made the golden sphere one. Um, and then I just started kind of doing uh, cool things like dropping in random shapes. Uh, so maybe like this. And then if you want to get, of course, just those beveled uh, reflections like I was talking about before, uh, just to make the scene look far more realistic, make it editable, control A, bevel, slight bevel on it, and then you get that nice uh, kind of reflection going down there. Uh, and I'm pretty sure from that point on, um, you can suss out how I did everything in the other scenes. If you've got topple wire, I'm going to show you one last thing, which is really cool. Uh, so plugins, top of wire, generate, put that to 0 0.05, bring the curvature down a bit, direction, blast it up, sphere a bit bigger, and then you have these nice kind of wires going on the scene, but I don't think there's really anything left to show you, um, I created a couple other scenes, uh, but I think at this point uh, you kind of know how they were uh, they were made, um, you know, doing things like that, like interchanging the other side of the ball, um, you know, quite quite simple stuff. Um, can completely change the scene. So there you have it. Um, I hope this tutorial brought you some value. I know it's quite uh, more on the simpler side of renders, um, but I don't always want to come at you with something I'm, you know, dug in the depths of my brain to figure out how to, to think you'll want to see when really I think a, a lot of people just want to see uh, how other artists work and uh, how they approach things. Um, I think one way to improve is to look at other artists' renders and try to recreate them um, because then you kind of get in someone else's shoes and uh, that doing that with raw and rendered image here, it, it, it sent me on this just, you know, bonanza of <laughs> creating um, different sphere based renders and uh, I ended up with some really cool stuff and it was all just from sitting there um, blankly staring at the, the loading screen for R20 for the past few years. <laughs> so create some cool stuff with this. All the project files uh, for this will be on my Selfie as usually. I'm going to keep doing that. Please check it out. Uh, get some assets. That will really help me out. Um, I am going to put a full intro tutorial up there soon, uh, going through how I make an intro uh, start to finish and also talking a bit about how to get clients and the kind of clients you'll come across in that kind of space. And go and create some dope sphere renders. Feel free uh, to like and comment and uh, check out more of my work on my Instagram. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.